friend of mine, another friend of mine that came in this week from Birmingham, a really special friend of mine. Uh, man, God's blessed me with some really special people. A really special friend of mine that came and visited from Birmingham. Um, he came a day um, early to, uh, to hang out with us. And Ruthie was super excited about Uncle Colwell being here. But Colwell's his last name. Uh, he was a guy that was in the Marine Corps with me. And I remember when I first met him, I was like, who's this dude? You know, guys sometimes kind of size up other guys, especially, you know, when you still got a little bit of carnality in you. And I was like, who's this dude? And um, we got deployed in 0405 to Iraq and um, ended up in the same platoon together, and we became super close friends. And uh, we've been friends since 2004. And uh, even though we're, there's some distance between us in terms of location, um, we're still just as just as close, and I know that probably many of you um, have similar experiences um, with with your friends and family. Uh, but we were uh, just reminiscing and talking, and he was actually telling about another friend that was in the Marine Corps um, with us, and that he's doing jujitsu and these these other things. Now we were kind of talking about workouts and CrossFit and running and all these different things that we've done. And uh, so I hit my friend up, um, the other guy, and. It brought back a flood of memories to me. So on, on March the 9th, 2008, um, I was, we, were, we were in a field ops, and we wrapped up our field ops, and we were about to head back to our base, and we had, um, we had our normal um, convoy, but we also had uh, charter buses um, to fit all of us on there because we couldn't all fit on the, on the convoy. And so we were rolling on base, and the bus driver uh, started taking a curve too fast. And, uh, and some say that he was on his phone, I don't know, but he started going off the road and tried to correct the bus, and the bus, the back of it, fishtailed completely around like this, and it started sliding, and then it flipped um, two times um, with all of us in it. it. I got thrown out about 40 to 50 feet away from the bus, um, and, uh, I came to, um, on the ground. I remember, I remember standing up and I remember the bus sliding and then starting to make the first roll. And I don't remember th anything after that until I came to on the ground. Um, when I came, when I came to on the ground, I didn't, I don't know if the wind was knocked out of me or what was going on. I just know that the only thing that I could get out of my mouth was his name. I could only get out Jesus. It's the only thing that I could get out of my name. Jesus. Jesus. And the guy that my friend and I were reminiscing about, who I texted this weekend, I just said, man, you know, well, what happened was is, is, is they were on another bus, and his name is Eric Kelly. Um, and he said as soon as he got off the bus, he said he started running towards us. And he says, I saw you lying there. And he knew I actually was in a two-man tent with him um, during our whole field op. So he, he actually knew what undershirt. I had this green Under Armour undershirt underneath my cami. Um, and I had taken off my camis um, when I got on the bus. I'm like relaxing and chilling. Even pulled out of the old iPod, you know, that you plug in and, you know, <laughs> had the little dial on it, that one. Um, so I had that one. I was ready to just blaze the trail home. But he said, he said, as soon as I got off the bus, he says, I locked, I saw your shirt, and you were lying there on the ground. And he said, I came, he said, I came running to you. And um, anyway, this is what we were reminiscing about. Um, and even as you started singing that song, thank you, God just started flooding me. You know, the, 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 there's so many powerful things about that, that moment. Um, we were in a two-man tent together. My phone had died. And I remember having to use his phone. I said, hey, bro, can I use your phone? Um, I need to just let my mom know I'm okay. You know, you gotta, all Marines got to still let their moms know that they're okay. And so I hit up my mom and I uh, said, hey, we're going to be getting out of the field tomorrow. Just wanted to let you know, um, you know, what we're, what, what's going on with us. And she said, the Lord is an ever-present help in the day of trouble. And I'm like, Psalm 46, right? I'm like, well, I'm, I mean, at that time I was... 25, I'm trying to find a wife. I mean, real deal, if like you really think about like what was going through my mind in that season, I'm wrapping up college, 
I'm about to be an adult, although I was already an adult, but I was really about to be an adult, you know, paying rent and all those types of bills that you just split with college roommates. I'm about to do all this on my own, but really the main thing that I was thinking about is like, man, I'm, I'm 25 years old. It's time, you know. And so when my mom, I was like, I'm not in Iraq anymore. You know, like seriously, when my mom released that verse over my life, I was like, cool verse. I mean, I'm very familiar with it. I got super familiar with that verse when I was in Iraq, but this is, we're, we're, in, we're in the States, right? Um, I did not know that prophetically what she released over my life was the shield, you know, over my life. It goes back to what Haley was saying with actually being in the word. God speaks to you through his word. If you want to know his voice, but you don't know his word, then you really don't really care to know his voice. I want to know what God's saying to me. Well, do you actually know what his word says? Because you can get really off really quick if you just say, I heard God, and you don't know this. I mean, that's a, that's a fact. So mom released that over my life. And that whole day on March 9th, 2008, was God himself that saved me, healed me to the uttermost. You know, what we were just singing. I remember I was in bed three in the triage. I got transported to the hospital. And I knew, I, I, I thought for sure that I was seriously hurt. And um, when I heard bed three cleared, I just wept. I did. I wept because I had gotten so busy with life, so invested in the cares of this world, that sometimes, like all of us, we sometimes we put them on the back burner. And it's even why I didn't, even what the scripture says, even while we are yet hopeless and powerless, it says Christ died for the ungodly. And I was wrecked. And I just reminisced with this guy. I just shot him a text. I said, I hadn't talked to him. And I mean, it's, it's actually been a couple of years. And I said, I just want you to know how thankful I am for you. Um, you know, how much you mean to me. Um, time and distance can never um, separate us and he hit me up this morning, and he said, I'm in tears just thinking about what you said to me. He said, I was just sitting here. His dad just recently passed away. He said, I was just wondering if my life counted. And uh, just what you s said to me just brought so much hope um, into my life. And I uh, said, so, man, it's a, it's a mutual exchange when God puts us into community, even what Haley was saying about being community. It's not just about being a part of a group. But it is about being in community. That's why scripture says, do not forsake the fellowship of the believers. Have you all heard that verse before? Do not fa forsake the fellowship of the believers. And if you continue to read that verse, it says, even as you see the day approaching. Which means that you should actually be in community more as you see the day approaching than you were last year. And so we need to continue to make efforts to actually just be um, with other believers so that we can be sharpened. Um, so that we can just be filled more with the Holy Spirit. It says the Godhead dwells within the body. It's not a solo ship. It's us all together. But we have a lot to be thankful for. And I was just on the front row thinking about just what God has done and God is reminding me of over the past just, you know, couple days, even this morning as my friend um, hit me up. And I'm just going to read one verse to us. I'd I'd actually talked or actually studied a lot about Abraham, and we may talk about him here in a minute, but, um, you know, we had that Because You Asked series, and the first one that Pastor Howard um, preached on was about the will of God, you know, knowing the will of God. So I'm going to help us add on to that message because, you know, Pastor Howard, he was a little deficient on that message. Um, so if you're watching the archive, Pastor Howard, um, I'm just kidding. You know, Pastor Howard always gets up here and just decides that I'm just a special target on the front row and just hoses me. Y'all realize that? You know we can't play basketball, by the way. He gets in the flesh, too, by the way. Really bad. I mean, most people do when they're not winning. And they're out of breath. Severely out of breath. 1 Thessalonians 5, <clears throat> verse 16, rejoice always, hold on, let me read it, rejoice sometimes, rejoice maybe, 
Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks. For this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. Can it get any more plain for us? Rejoice always, pray without ceasing, in everything give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. I would encourage you to feast on, this is actually three scriptures. It's 1 Thessalonians 5, 16, 17, and 18. I bet if we lived this, that all of our situations would be different. You know, Haley was, was, as she was sharing, she was saying that many of us have come into this room with many different circumstances and situations. Some of them are great mountains that stand before us. You know, my wife and I, we, we've got some mountains in front of us right now that we're, uh, we, we, we kneel down with Ruthie at night, and we're praying, and we put it before the Lord. Um, and there are things that we can't just in the natural fix and resolve. Um, and when you start bringing your thoughts into the mountains, um, it can be very disheartening. I mean, you guys feel me on that. It can be very, very stressful. It's like what it says in Psalm 27. Um, I would have lost heart if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the Lord in the land of the living. I would have lost heart if I had not believed. You know, the word believe is not just I agree. Believe, when you actually look up that word in the New Testament, it's the verb form of faith. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen yet. We should always add yet to it back in the day at church. Who added yet to it back in the day? Let me see if we got some friends in here. I would have lost heart or I would be in a place of heaviness and despair, worry, fear, doubt, and anxiety if I had not believed. Faith without works is no faith at all. It's dead. I believe that the Lord wants to elevate our hopes, even in the service. And I believe this right here, rejoice always. Why? Because I've overcome the world. Has he overcome the world, or is it just a cute verse that we like to quote? Is Psalm 27, 13 just a really cute verse? I would have lost heart if I had not believed that I would see the goodness of the, in the Lord in the land of the living. Pass me some sparkling water. Fantastic verse. Like Haley said, we sing songs. We quote verses. We preach messages. Did Israel not also hear the gospel preached? They did not mix the word with faith. I believe there's a great separation already happening in the earth. And it's going to look like it did, really, I would say, even in the days of Abraham. You know, Don, you remember when I preached a few weeks ago, he, he, he was like, hey, I, what was that verse that you actually mentioned about coming out from your country? You know, Abraham was given instruction from the Lord, says, all right, I need you to leave your country and your family. Now, this doesn't give me, you know, the right to, hey, Tara and Ruthie and the one to come, I'm out. But Abraham was really a part of an ungodly environment for his history. And the Lord's like, I'm doing something brand new. Don't you love that verse? See, I'm doing something brand new among you. And even before it springs up, the Lord says, I announce it. And that's, that's really the language of heaven. If that's not the frequency that you're tuned into, see, I'm doing something brand new. And even before it springs up, the Lord is saying, I announce it. I need you to leave your country. I need, to leave, I need you to leave what's familiar, what's comfortable 
what makes sense to the natural mind because it says the natural mind stands actually at war with the spirit. It's at enmity with God. I heard this pastor say one time, and you hear this all the time, it's common sense. It's, it's, it's common sense that you would stay right here. It's, 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 it's super comfortable and it's familiar and it's predictable. You know, you, you fill in the blank and he says, common to what world? Common to what world? Last time I checked, when you actually read Hebrews 11, the Hall of Fame of Faith, it made no sense to build an ark in the middle of dry land. Did it make sense for Abraham to leave and go somewhere where he did not know where he was going? Anybody just, I mean, maybe we've one Sunday afternoon just said, hey, I just want to drive around. I'm just going to wander around. But I'm not usually saying, hey, Tara, um, I just think I'm going to get in the car and pack all you guys up and we'll just float somewhere and figure out where we're going. I mean, we typically have destinations that we're going to. But Abraham was being led away, but he was being brought into something. He was being brought into his promise. Um, and he says in, in, in Hebrews, I mean in uh, Genesis 12, that the Lord says, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm bringing you into a, a, a place of promise. Um, I will bless those who bless you. I will curse those who curse you. And all the families of the earth shall be blessed through you. And you see this incredible journey that Abraham goes on. And again, I would encourage you to read from Genesis 11, um, even to Genesis 22. Those are some very key, um, pivotal chapters. But there were so many opportunities for Abraham as he was on his journey. And we're all on a journey. That's what Hebrews 12 says. They're reflecting on the Hall of Fame of Faith where Abraham is actually in. But he says, you guys are all on a journey too. Cast off the weight and the sin that so easily besets you. And run your race with endurance, the race that's been marked out for you. But Abraham had all these different moments, all these challenges, all these circumstances, and you can fit yourself into his story because we have journeyed for, what, three years as a church to this point. Some of you guys have been in your own realities for maybe two years three years five years ten years and you've seen God break through here but now again you come to you come to another mountain you come to an, another impossibility you come to another place where you're disheartened and you're like oh my god my, my, my back is to the Red Sea what in the world am I going to do this happened to Abraham over and over and over again, and there was always an opportunity. There was carrots or exit ramps, you could say, for Abraham to detour and to exit. Just like there is for us right now. Everybody has an opportunity. This is what it says in Hebrews 11, as it's reflecting on all the people in that chapter. It says, they all had an opportunity to return to their original country. We all have an opportunity to get off this, this road. Pastor Howard um, actually talked about the narrow road. You remember last week? The narrow, road, the narrow road that it's actually, it says it's difficult, and it says very few find it. I don't think it's just talking about salvation. I don't think he was actually preaching that either. I think it's the road that Abraham walked, where you really do Give your entire life to Jesus. Not just a prayer, not just your heart, but everything. And this is ultimately what we see about Abraham's life. That's why he's called a friend of God, and that's why he's actually called the father of faith. But Galatians 3 actually says that we too, who have actually taken the same road that Abraham has taken, it says that we're actually heirs of Abraham and that we actually received the blessings of Abraham. Isn't that amazing? What I really felt deep in my heart, I need to check my time too. Where's my time? Okay. Got a little bit of time left. What I really felt deep in my heart too is that I know for us as a family, 
my wife and I, we, we are, you can call it a crossroad, you can call it a mountain, a challenge that's before us. We've seen God break through over and over and over again. It's good to reflect on those things where God has broke through because he will do it again. But what was so cool about Abraham's journey is it was one thing after another. And God even had to remind him, I said this to you in Genesis 12. I'm saying it again to you in Genesis 15. I'm going to say it again to you in Genesis 17. And then I'm going to put a big exclamation on it in Genesis 22. He continued to say that I'm going to bless you, Abraham. Well, hold on. I am 75. My wife is beyond the age to bear kids. And it's impossible for me to have an heir. But we know the Lord broke through. Gave him, him, gave him the most special promise that he could have ever imagined and never thought at, w- at one moment in his life that it would even be brought to fruition. But then, theologians say that Isaac was between 20 and 37 years old when he actually told him to go to Moriah and to put him on an altar and sacrifice him. Abraham, it says, immediately woke up the next day, prepared the wood, and he took his very, it actually says, Scripture says, his only son, and took him to Moriah, and was prepared to actually put the knife through him before the Lord said, Abraham, Abraham. He says, now I know. This was ultimately a test. He says, now I know that you won't withhold anything from me. And then he actually put this exclamation. He said, blessing, I will bless you, and multiplying, I will multiply you. And he says, and your children, your generations, it says that they will defeat their enemies at the gate. And it says the Lord provided a ram for Abraham, a substitute, which is ultimately a a, a reflection of Jesus. And it says that in that moment, the Lord revealed to him, the Lord revealed to Abraham that he is Jehovah Jireh, the Lord who provides. We all have certain challenging circumstances, but I believe that God has brought us to some of these mountains before us, whether it was God bringing us to us or the enemy coming against us, and the Lord wants to reveal himself in a way that you've never experienced the Lord before. That's why Haley can actually quote John 16 and say, take heart, I've overcome every situation in here. And the situations that you're in right now, I promise you, when he said it was finished, he included your situation. The question really will be is, do you believe it? Isaiah 53, the greatest picture of what happened to Jesus The very first verse in there says, whose report will you believe? You going to believe your own thoughts? Because it says if your thoughts actually don't line up with the chief cornerstone, it says take them captive and lead them them away. You going to believe your own thoughts? What makes sense to you? If it does not line up again with the chief cornerstone, then your building is going to collapse. It's it's, It's a kingdom divided. The encouragement to all of us is just as much as Jesus revealed himself as El Shaddai to Abraham and God eternal to Abraham and the Lord will provide to Abraham, he is going to do this with all of us in the season of life that we're in right now. What if Abraham did not believe the Lord? What would it have looked like for his family and what would it have looked like for the world? God, I believe, wants to not just break through in our situations, but as there's this big, I would say, um, separation in the earth, there will be people that actually walk with Jesus, and there's going to be people who go to church, but they do everything else 
in addition to it. Romans 8 says, the sons and daughters of God are those who are led by the Spirit. And it says that creation longs and groans for the sons of God and the daughters of God to appear, is what it says in Romans 8. I promise you, we need to be involved in the political process, but there is not a Messiah in Washington, D.C. There's not a Messiah at the U.N. There's not a Messiah in the EU he's already come and he says I've actually went and I've sat at the right hand of God waiting for my enemies to be made my footstool by you by the church the militant alive prosperous church it's way more than us guys it's way more than just your breakthrough It's about your breakthrough, but it's about the breakthrough of all the people that you rub shoulders with. Amen? Guys, you can go ahead and stand.